Hello and welcome. This is our second part actually of our detailed look at Apple's new launches and a lot of other related features, especially the innovation around it. And we really want to start looking at the watch and the ECG feature and things like and that. And also, of course, the fact that we spoke about this last time, a lot of people saying, if I upgrade, do I get truly a better camera in many ways? So we'll talk about the camera, the comparisons out there. And then we've also got a robot, not from Apple though. So here's a quick look at the entire lineup on today's show. Rajiv and Vikram cannot get enough of the new iPhones and continue their in-depth analysis of the Tennis, the Tennis Max and the Apple Watch Series 4. Photographer Nena Redu joins us on the show to crown the camera king. Is it the Huawei P20 Pro, the Google Pixel 2 XL or the new iPhone? And a special robot joins us on the show and it promises to clean up all your mess. And now a quick look at the gadget and gizmo related news stories this week. Xiaomi is expanding its portfolio in India and at an event in Bangalore, they brought in several devices across different platforms. They announced their new TV with patch wall and Android combined. The Mi Band 3 has been introduced which now comes with a stopwatch, better notifications and up to 50 meters water resistance. The new air purifier was also showcased which now has an OLED screen to display PM 2.5 levels. A 360 degree security camera and a suitcase was also on display at the event. In a teaser video, LG showed its upcoming phone, the V40 ThinQ. With a remarkable 5 camera setup, the cameras at the back are likely to be 20 megapixel, 16 megapixel, and 13 megapixel. And the front cameras could support bokeh effect. Of course, one of the major reasons for talking about an upgrade is always the improved camera and especially telephoto functionality and stuff like that. No, so no, the HDR that they've taken it to now, the portrait levels that they now have that you can achieve with this and some of the other things, the algorithm and software that they've brought in. In fact, the iPhone XR with a single lens can now do better photography than most dual lens cameras. Again, to do with the software and everything else. But, but I think put we should it to put the it test. to the test. I think right? let's yes. put it to the test. Let's see how it compares with other equivalent phones. So what we're going to do is we will compare it to uh, some of the competition. And Pixel then we'll maybe? Also, yeah, we, so we'll compare it to the competition, the Note 9, uh, the Pixel and everything else. But I think the real difference would be, is there enough of a difference between the 10 and the 10S? Because that could be a buying criteria. <laughs> It's almost like the iPhone has taken upon itself to ensure that you get the best profile pictures and the most comment-worthy Instagram moments. But hold on, Apple, before we declare you the camera king, let's bring in the competition and get started with a shootout, shall we? First up, there's the Samsung Note 9. With its mighty 12 megapixel plus 12 megapixel dual rear camera with a dual aperture lens. This changes the amount of light in accordance with the setting. So far, Samsung is the only company to have this dual aperture setting. The camera also has scene recognition and tunes the pictures according to the setting. Samsung calls it Scene Optimizer. We just call it AI. No doubt, this has remarkable pictures. For low light, Samsung has just a single LED flash, so the iPhone clicks better in this setting. To put it to a test, we spoke to Nena Redu, a professional photographer who got her hands on three phones touted to have the best optics. Today I've got three phones that I am trying out for photography. I have the iPhone XS Max, I have the Huawei P20 Pro and the Google Pixel 2 XL. We wanted to test the camera in a low light setting, so we entered a very dimly lit room and tried out the various phones. Considering the night mode, uh, the Huawei wins hands down. The Pixel retains a lot of detail, but the Apple didn't really perform as well as I thought it would considering it's a new phone. The detailing is okay and the brightness is also okay, but it's hard to compare and say that it's really good. Next, we put the bokeh mode to test. This effect allows you to blur the background and focus on the subject. We tried the three phones uh, on the bokeh mode. The Apple performed best. 
there are especially these studio modes uh, in mono and color those are really cool the pixel also did really good uh, it's situational uh, but the huawei did not perform the way i had thought it would and there was very little separation from the subject in the front and the back now it was time to test that which camera produces the best colors uh, we also tried the phones in different colors and uh, the Huawei, obviously, if you put it on night mode and shoot it, the colors were lovely. The iPhone and the Google Pixel 2 uh, kind of looked similar, but obviously the Pixel had more detail uh, than the Apple. After this, we headed outdoors to test the camera in broad daylight. So we now tried the three phones in natural light. And I think if you don't want to edit your images at all, then the iPhone worked really well. If you want to pull out a little more detail from the shadows than the pixel and uh, the Huawei didn't do well at all, it blew out the highlights. As a photographer, I would not buy the iPhone XS. Uh, it is definitely better than the previous generation because of the HDR, but I still uh, prefer the Google Pixel too. So here's, here's a question. Everything that you saw out there, there was actually one product that I was actually wishing and hoping you would get back for me for once. And I've even paid you for it. Because it is time, finally. I got you an empty box of the iPhone. Why are you yeah, asking for you. something that I have already no, got? But you. it's fi time, finally, to make the change. And if there's one product that Apple unveiled that I actually think I would like to buy. The yes. iPhone Raju 10. No. Okay, empty box I've already got you. No. New straps for your Apple Watch Series 1. I don't have an Apple Watch. Okay. Uh, what but else? But it's time to get it now. The Apple Watch 4, yeah. uh, they've really been improving the Apple Watch at great length. For some reason, we have both resisted going in and buying it. But I think the time is finally here. There's enough happening in that watch. See, now. I'll tell you what. Can I can I make an honest to confession? Justify. Because you know, many times being what we do out here, we can't truly express our real feelings of what goes on in our hearts. So I have to confess to you that I really missed you. Okay, and I'll tell you how it happened. So Apple Watch Series 4 being presented on that very very large stage, and say they spoke about the fact that it can now detect people that fall a lot. I missed you so much at that time. Then they spoke about ECG. In this show, if there's a person who's fallen, he's not me. So, you know, I missed him a lot because, you know, it can now detect a person who's fallen and if he doesn't move for the next five seconds, then it will automatically call and he'll, I know he'll put my number out there as an emergency contact. So that's not nothing to look forward to, a watch calling that's and saying, Vikram thir gir gaya hai. Every day I'll go through that five, ten times and I'll be like, you know, just standard hai, aadmi wohi karega. No, good, okay. Can I, can I, can I, can I, but you interrupt No, but the part course. that really made me miss you was the ECG because, you know, it is recommended for octogenarians and people like you that you must get something like yeah. that once every six months at your age, right? Now, just hold the crown, Vikram, hold the crown. You see, it's really it's good. It's what Queen Elizabeth yeah. said to... Yeah, so here's, here's, here's the really good thing. Mm -hmm. Aren't you really glad that what Apple did was have a ECG feature in there? Because if they had the EEG feature and you were to try it out, it would show that you were brain dead. Which yeah, is that's actually clear. true. I'm, I'm, and no brain waves. I'm so, as so a glad I didn't that, miss you myself be, with that new feature. You but would be dragged true. away. It's a, you know, but so actually, you know something? I, th there's one thing which we keep hoping for and praying for and waiting for. I'm not sure when that's going to happen. No, I'm back. Which is the battery. No, not pray. you. It's the battery. Right, but you keep on waiting for that, you know, six day so battery. So can I tell you? Which is the reason I haven't bought the Apple yeah, Watch but, but all the time. But that doesn't change. I keep hoping that someday no. they will make the battery life even better. But I think there's enough in so it. So I have that to tell you, the, this Diwali. What did I find to be when the funniest out there? It, it's about to come on. A month, month and a half, it will be out. I think they're just waiting for the eSIM part of it and the vendors to come in and do that right thing. But I have to tell you the other part that I find. Because, you know, I love Apple. I mean, I'm saying it out there. I love the company. I love the way they do these things. I mean, you know, maybe not Finally. so much the products. Finally. Go back, to his, go back to his statements from 10 years ago. No, I've loved the company. But I'll tell you why. Because it has a sense of humor. So, big thing about battery. And the first phone, half an hour more battery life. And I was like, wow. Everybody was like, yeah. 
half an hour more battery life and the whole hall erupted because they're like, oh, at least now from 2.30 to 3 in the afternoon, I'll have better battery life, okay. Then for the, uh, the max, they said, one and a half hours more battery life, yeah. I mean, people almost, I thought, were going to, uh, you know, there was going to be a, a raid on the stage because Mr. Cook said one and a half hours more battery life. And then Apple Watch Series 4, exactly the same battery life as you would get before. So I think battery life is becoming yeah. a bit of an Achilles heel for Apple because and they seem to celebrate half an hour more battery life and more than anything else. It used to be at one time Apple Watch face. They used to say two new Mickey Mouse faces and everyone used to go, yes, that's it. The revolution has come. But battery life. But, and then the related question to that, something which I thought you were going to be announcing and getting back and letting us know, air power. It will make life so much simpler if you could put all your ga uh, Apple gadgets on one yeah, particular the Mac Matt is still and to charge come. it. Yeah. So, so the big rumor that? was uh, the MacBook Air Retina and the, the Power Mac that this was to come. Both have still not seen the light of day. But I have to say that uh, Vikram's completely right. Uh, may well be the innovation of the year, and that's the Apple Watch Series 4 with the ECG and the Vikram fall function. Take a look. The new Apple Watch Series 4 has your back and your heart. Talk about revolution on a wrist because that's what the new Apple Watch claims to be. The most talked about feature about this gadget is not an exciting watch face with a dancing cartoon character, a fitness tracker or even its battery life. It can be summed in three letters, ECG. Built into the back of the sapphire crystal and digital crown, users can now take an electrocardiogram or ECG, the first of its kind on a smartwatch. This will measure electrical activity of the heartbeat in order to help diagnose heart diseases and other conditions. You are able to take an ECG anytime, anywhere, straight from your wrist by opening the app and placing your finger on the digital crown. Since all of the information is stored in the health app, you will be able to share the ECG with the doctor, who will be able to see a more detailed picture of what's going on. Apple has also received clearance from the Food and Drug Administration. This kind of innovation from a smartwatch is unheard of till now. And we can't wait for the Apple Watch to come to India. After all, we want to know will this smartwatch give some stiff competition to traditional ECG machines in big hospitals? The ECG feature isn't all that has us sticking. Want to sign up to be your clumsy brother's emergency contact? Because you may get alerts all day, every day. How? The Apple Watch Series 4 now comes with a fall detection and emergency SOS feature that will alert authorities in case one falls. We'll wait for the watch to come into our hands for a full review, but for now, here are some specs. The Series 4 has a 30% larger screen and thinner bezels than the previous Apple Watch, and it claims to have a responsive haptic feedback that allows for a responsive feel when you scroll through. Powering it all is Apple's next-gen S4 64-bit dual-core processor, which claims to work twice as fast. The Apple Watch OS 5 is out, and we are sure that existing Apple Watch users have already installed it and cheered about new watch faces. But the real game-changer will be the Series 4, which is currently priced at $399 US and $499 for the cellular version. It is expected to launch in India in October.